man presented to us with a CSF rhinorrhea from the right nostril which had started after endoscopic surgery done elsewhere for nasal polyposis. His uh, CT scan revealed a fairly large defect in the lateral lamella of the right cribriform plate which was extending also to the roof of the ethmoid and uh, as we see the subsequent CT scan plates we find that it is a fairly large defect extending right up to the medial wall of the orbit through which in CT cystonography you can see the dye leaking out into the nose. At surgery, the nasal endoscopy clearly showed us a pseudomeningocele pulsating from the cribriform plate area and uh, after local decongestion with the help of saline adrenaline, we removed the adhesions and the polypoid tissue in the anterior ethmoidal area to expose the pseudomeningocele and delineate the defect. There was fairly firm fibrous tissue which had to be taken off in order to delineate the entire defect. And now we clearly see a fairly large meningocele projecting into the nasal cavity. You can see pulsating and you can see that the defect is extending from the cribriform plate to the roof of the ethmoid right up to the lamina papyracea area. Now we first covered the entire defect area without reducing the meningocele. After ensuring that it was reducible, because every time we reduced it, it would pop back out. So we covered it completely with a piece of uh, with a piece of fascia lata. And then, after having spread this piece to not only cover the defect, but a fair margin on the surrounding skull base. You can very clearly see that the brain is pulsating there through the fascia. We took a piece of cartilage slightly bigger than the size of the defect. This was harvested from the nasal septum and then pushed this cartilage through the defect with the fascia beyond it so that the fascia also went intracranially and the part cartilage was sort of fitted into that defect and being larger in size than the defect, it got wedged into the defect pushing the prolapsing muco, uh, the prolapsing uh, meningocele and keeping it intracranially. Then we took a second piece of the fascia and spread it on top of the cartilage. Having spread it out properly, we again took it off. You can see the cartilage in C2 fitting against the skull base. Put some glue on that area. So we now had fascia which had gone intracranially, then cartilage fitting into the defect and a piece of fascia stuck on top of that. And this was further supported with the help of gel foam and merocell to give us a very firm repair. The merocell as usual is removed after about four to five days and this patient has had no recurrence of leak even two years after the surgery.